What if Naruto was OP but neglected part 10? Let's go. After watching and reading some feedback, I realized that you guys didn't really like the last part, which is why I'm actually going to change the story a little bit here and actually kind of go back in time and change what happened. Now, it's not going to be a huge change, but it is going to be a significant one in that Naruto actually kind of realized that Minato was going to use a lot more power, which is why Naruto was the one to actually overpower Minato and put in more chakra at the very last moment to instead of break Naruto's arm and actually, well, annihilate it, Minato's arm was still annihilated as normal, but all it did to Naruto was actually break some bones in his hand, and that's it. So, he was the last one standing, and therefore won his bout. Sorry, won the bout with Minato. Which is why here, he's actually able to keep his Jonin title, and actually was able to defeat the fourth Hokage. Which is a win in itself, to be honest. Now, all the Kage have a deep respect for him, since it was shown that Naruto may actually be the st like stronger than any of the five Kage, which is very impressive for a 10 year old boy. But it says it in the title, right? Now, Minato, when waking back up in a hospital in the Leaf Village, would not accept this loss, but would have to deal with it for now. His hatred grew stronger and stronger for Naruto as he was not only now fighting a monster but someone who made the fourth Hokage look bad. The entire village of Konoha look bad because a 10 year old was able to defeat their Kage. It was like an insult. Naruto was making fun of them. He would have to get revenge on that little boy, on that demon as well as the other villages that voted against Minato's idea of abolishing Naruto's Jonin titles, and of course, Chunin and Genin as well. However, even though he won, Naruto would keep training at this point, and after being congratulated by each Kage as to keep his Jonin rank, he went back to the Cloud Village. When already have gotten back to the village, the Raikage apologizes that Naruto even had to go through those challenges because, well, technically, the Raikage could have just, well, talked about the contract that the five villagers had, which basically said, Leaf Village, get out of my business. But the Raikage forgot. And I know it sounds stupid, but he genuinely forgot. So, yeah, technically he could have stopped us, but since it ended in an okay way, it was okay. But, yeah, he apologizes, and that's no ended story now. Now, at this point, there will be a pretty big time skip, though of course there's things that happen in between. And the reason for that is that I need to catch up to Shippuden. Therefore, we need a five-year time skip. So, that will happen, but a few things to note in between. As I said before, Naruto will be training like crazy. Not as crazy as when, as in the scenario that he actually lost the fight with Minato, but he is still gonna train, uh, pretty hard. Naruto is actually going to become an Anbu. Now this is not right off the bat, this is about one year after his kind of training time skip happened. And also, he's not going to seclude himself from the village like the first time, so don't worry about that. He still has because of his connections. He still walks through the village regularly, grabs some food, talks to his friends, does shinobi duties, all of that beautiful stuff. One day, the title beast come together and tell Naruto on his 12th birthday that he's now ready for his summoning jutsu. Naruto always knew what summoning jutsu was and how to do it, but was never really eager to have one since his friends was all he needed. He didn't want a summoning, to be honest. Though when the tailed beast enlightened him about what he could have, he definitely wanted one. Naruto had the ability to summon any of the tailed beasts 
kind of, well, as a summon instead of a real tail beast. Though the power of a summon, it was equal to their actual tail beast that he was summoning. So for example, if he summoned the nine tails, it would be 100% of the nine tails chakra and the, the missing chakra for any of the tail beast Naruto would make up from his own since he does have enough chakra definitely. So his summoning of the nine tails for example would be strong enough to take down the leaf or Minato like it did in the normal events of the Knight of the Nine Tails. So yeah, his summoning, very powerful. Now, his Sage Chakra is kind of similar. He doesn't have a toad or a snake or a slug or anything like that. He also has a tailed beast kind of Sage Chakra. So he is actually the very first Sage of Tailed Beasts and has Tailed Beast Chakra. Since the Tailed Beasts are basically incarnations of pure Chakra and I guess parts of the Nine Tails too. But they also kind of grab some Chakra from nature energy. And Naruto basically converts the energy that they take from nature Chakra and makes it his own. So indirectly he is using the tail beast to gather chakra for him, which makes it nine times as effective as effective as if it was just him gathering nature chakra. It takes about a month of training, but Naruto finally becomes a perfect tail beast sage. A few months later, Naruto actually got a message from who would have guessed? The Sage of Six Paths, Agromo Otsutsuki himself. It was kind of like Minato did with Kurama. A little bit of his chakra imprinted into each one of the tail beasts, as if anyone ever combined or had all the tail beasts inside them and was almost a perfect Jinchuriki at least, they would get a certain message. And that was the one that Naruto is currently receiving. If you're reading this or hearing this, you're very powerful. And probably even more powerful than I will be or have been. However, the chakra message slowly gained somewhat of a consciousness and was see able to see the tail beast and Naruto standing in front of him. Magromo was kind of like a ghost at this point. A fading chakra apparition, but slowly but surely, for some reason, gaining strength. For now, only enough to talk and see things, but who knows, perhaps he could grow stronger, but for now, that was only a fantasy. Hagoromo, who could now see basically the children of his, the tailed beast, and their inheritors their ultimate Jinchuriki, Naruto, who at this point was not much older than 12. What a young boy, Agoromo thought to himself, but he must be very powerful to be able to control and have the respect of all the tailed beasts. Couldn't have been very easy, huh? Hello there, young boy. My name is Agoromo, Otsutsuki son of the mother of chakra you might know me as the sage of the six paths perhaps oh you're you're the sage of six paths wow i was i was not expecting that you look very old naruto knew the story of the otsutsuki and how kaguya was the mother of chakra and stuff like that or at least as best as possible told by the tailed beasts as they didn't know everything about it. But Hagoromo told the story in more detail and from his point of view. And honestly, it made more sense than when people like Kurama or Shukaku told the story. Especially Shukaku who was terrible at explaining. 
and not even the other tailed beasts who had been around him for multiple centuries still didn't understand what he was saying. So, <laughs> yeah. Now tell me, boy. For this time, I've been sensing chakra in your eyes. But I can tell that you're not from the Uchiha, Hyuga, or especially not the Otsutsuki clan. So what is it? How is it that you have so much chakra in your eyes? Agaroma asked, and at this point Naruto activated his Renegon in one eye and his Mangekyo Sharingan in the other. Agaroma was flabbergasted. A boy so young, not, e not just able to have multiple dojutsu as powerful as the Renegon and Mangekyo Sharingan, but being able to control them so perfectly, turn them on and off, one eye and the other. Incredible. It took Hagoromo decades to master that. And Naruto was barely a decade old. Naruto explained how he got a lot of Keke Genkai, especially Dojutsu, by just training and imagining himself having those things and they just kind of appeared one day. Wow. Now that is cool. Hagoromo tried to use modern day language, but failed miserably. He only got a slight glimpse of some of the thoughts of the tailed beasts and Naruto's history and emotions, so he wasn't that aware of the modern world, but did know a few things, and even knew of legends like Hashirama and Madara, who he had been observing earlier as just pure chakra. Naruto continued his training over the months, which turned into years, when he was finally 15 years old. Hagoromo kind of sticked around in his head ever since. He didn't do much, though occasionally talked to Naruto, especially the tail beasts. Mostly caught up with them, especially at the beginning. Told Naruto some training he could do, some keke genkai or techniques that he could learn, etc. Now, Naruto was strong. Really, really strong. Stronger than Hagoromo, Hamura, or even Kaguya herself. Now, Naruto was truly on a godly Otsutsuki level. Basically, no human could ever defeat him at this point. Not even a reincarnation of Indra or Ashura, or even if it was the reincarnation of the Sage of Six Paths himself, no one could defeat Naruto at this point. At the very minimum, no one from this planet. Naruto became one of the most respected Anbu in the entire village, and actually became almost a symbol for the bingo book. Yes, you heard right. Naruto was put into the bingo book, multiple times actually, and was now classed as an SS plus rogue shinobi. I know technically he's not rogue, but he's kind of rogue if you think about it. It's kind of confused. Some people think of him as a rogue shinobi, some people don't. It's kind of a mixed opinion. But anyways, most important thing you gotta know, he is in the bingo book. And he is on the front page. From threatening to keeping people in check, especially his popularity. And Naruto was thought of to be by far the strongest in the Hidden Cloud Village. And even some people from other villages thought he was the strongest in the world. Stronger than the Five Kages, any Jonin, Anbu, or anybody. Even the strongest amongst the rogue shinobi, which there was definitely some powerful ones. Some people even said Naruto, if he lived in the same age, could have defeated Hashirama and Madara even when they were working together. Especially in smaller villagers, Naruto became feared as if he was ever to arrive and had anything negative to do with that village, it could be wiped off from the face of the planet in mere seconds 
if Naruto wanted to. Naruto didn't really mind though, being hated or feared. He just wanted to everyone for, to know who he was. And if hated or scared or feared or not, his reputation grew day after day. I know not that much happened this episode, but I hope you still enjoyed. I hope I was able to at least somewhat fix my errors. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.